see down the group is that there is increase in atomic number and as the atomic number increases the number of shells increases and as the number of shells increases what happens to the size of the atom the size of the atom also increases atomic radius it is a measure of the atom, of the size of an atom across the period similar also occur across the period due to the fact that electrons are being added and as you are adding electron you are also adding proton simultaneously and as you add proton to the nucleus the size of the nucleus become bigger and as the size of the nucleus become bigger the distance between the valence electron and the nucleus become shorter in that situation it decreases across the period due to increase in nuclear charge down the group similar also is possible down the group because as you move down the group what happens is that there is increase in atomic number you can see 3 11 19 so as you are coming down the group there is increase in atomic number and as the atomic number increases the size of the atom increases because the distance between the valence electron and the nucleus become wider so in that situation it also increases down the group ionization energy this is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in a gaseous state to form an atom in gaseous ion. Ionization energy is the third properties of elements in the periodic table. The first one that I mentioned earlier was ionic size. Then the second one is atomic radius. The third one is ionization energy. How does it respond across the period and down the group? Across the period, it increases across the period due to increase in nuclear charge. Then down the group, it decreases down the group due to increase in atomic number. Now, how does it increase across the period? Across the period, let's pick some elements that are in the same period. 2, 1, 2, 2, then 2, 3, 2, 4. So 2, 1 is lithium. 2, 2 is beryllium. 2, 3 is boron. 2, 4 is carbon. Then 2, 5 is nitrogen. Nitrogen N. So it is evident as you move across the period that electrons are being added. One electron is added to this to make 2. One is added to this to make 3. One is added to this to make 4. One is added to this to make five. So it, what it means there is that as you are moving across the period, electrons are being added. And since we all know that electron is a function of proton, as you are adding electron, you are adding proton. And as you are adding proton, proton and neutrons are inside the nucleus here. So as you are adding proton, look at the shape of 2,1 for lithium. Then let's see the electron is here and you have two inside here then for beryllium beryllium is also but the size of the nucleus of beryllium will be bigger than that of the lithium simply because one more electron has been added and as you have added one more electron what it means is that the size of the nucleus will be bigger so what it means is that the size between the valence electron and the nucleus will be what will be closer so you have two here and you have two here so the size the distance between this and this compared to the distance between this and this the distance between this and this is shorter compared to the distance between this and this and since we all know that ionization energy is talking about the energy needed to remove this various electron and since this um, the the uh, the proton here or the size of this nucleus is closer to this electron it will require more energy to knock off this electron simply because the attraction here is greater than the attraction here and so more energy will be needed to remove this valence electron and that is why the ionization energy will definitely increase across the period because as you are having electron the nuclear charge is is on the increase as the nuclear charge is on the increase more energy will be required to knock off such an electron and that is why the ionization energy increases across the period and whatever happens across the period it is the opposite that will happen down the group so down the group 
when you consider lithium 2 1, sodium 2 8 1, potassium 2 8 8 1, and so on and so forth. So, in this situation, as you are moving down the group, the num atomic number increases. And as the no atomic number increases, the distance between the valence electron and the nucleus is wider. And such, what it means in that situation, in, in that situation is that electron on this can easily be knocked off compared to this because the attraction here is less than the attraction here. So as you are going down the group, the ionization energy will definitely decrease. So that is a simple explanation to justify how ionization energy respond across the period and down the group. Properties of elements in the periodic table. The fourth one is electron affinity. It is the energy required to add an electron to an atom in a gaseous state to form an atom in gaseous ion. Across the period, it increases across the period since the tendency to accept electron increases. And that is evident here. The tendency to add, because you are adding one electron to this to, to make it two. Add one to this to make it three. Add one, to, add one to this to make it four. Add one to this to make it five. So the tendency to accept electron across the period increases. And that is why the um, electron affinity increases across the period. Down the group, it decreases down the group since the tendency to release electron increases. Yes, the tendency to release electron increases down the group because of the attraction is less as you go down. And that is the reason for that. The electronegativity, that is the fifth properties of element in the periodic table. This is the ability of an, ele uh, of an element to attract electron to itself. Across the period, it decreases across the period due to the fact that the tendency to accept electron increases, just like what I explained in the case of electron affinity. Down the group, it decreases down the group due to the fact that the tendency to release electron decreases. That is the same reason as that of the electron affinity. Questions. The position of element in the periodic table is determined by A, the number of protons in its atom, B, its density, C, atomic radius, D, the number of neutrons. 2. Define periodic law. 3. Write the electron configuration of magnesium using Bohr model. 4. What is the, no what is the name for metalloids and give two examples? What is another name for metalloids and give two examples? 5. Three elements A, B, C have the same, have the atomic number of 8, 11, and 12 respectively. State which of these ele elements belong to S block in the periodic table. Answers. Answer to question number one. The position of elements of an element in the periodic table is determined by the number of protons in its atom. That is what determines the position of that's what determines the position of an element in the periodic table. Because we know that the position of elements in the periodic table is a function of the atomic number. And since we know that the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, definitely, question 1, A option, which is the number of protons in its atom, is the answer. Then question 2, define periodic law. Periodic law states that the properties of elements is the periodic function of their atomic number. What that one simply means is that the properties of elements will be dependent on the atomic number. Now, question number three. Write the electron configuration of magnesium using Bohr model. Bohr model talks about, talks about the shell arrangements. Shell arrangements. So in that situation, for magnesium, magnesium will definitely have two, eight, Two, simply because magnesium at atom has atomic number of 12. So the first shell will occupy two electrons. The second shell, which is your K shell, will, will occupy eight, while the third shell will definitely occupy two. So in this situation, this is the electron configuration of magnesium using Bohr model. What is another name 
for metalloids and give two examples. Another name for metalloid is semi metals. They call them semi metals. If you want to call them metalloids, you call them semi metals simply because you have them between the dividing line between what? Metals and non metals. That means they have, they they have partial characteristics of metals and they also have partial characteristics of non metals in combination makes them metalloids. So they are also called semi metals. Give two examples. Two examples for metalloids, you have silicon. Silicon and germanium. So these are the two examples of metalloids. Now, question number five. Three elements ABC have the atomic number of ABC. A has atomic number of eight. B has atomic number of eleven. Then C has atomic number of twelve. Now, State which of these elements belong to the S block in the periodic table. Before we can know the element that will belong to the uh, S block in the periodic table, that means the last electrons must be on the S orbital. So in that situation, we go by our arrangements 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. So we we strike it down. So in that situation, I will have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. That is the trend. But if I want to...